हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज इंडियन सिनेमा इमरजेंस ऑफ द स्टूडियो सिस्टम इन द अर्लियर लेक्चर ऑन द इमरजेंस ऑफ द स्टूडियो सिस्टम वी टॉक अबाउट दैट हाउ सम ऑफ द स्टूडियोज दे इमर्ज इन इंडिया एंड हाउ दीज स्टूडियोज दे वर इंस्ट्रूमेंटल इन टर्म्स ऑफ मेकिंग ऑफ द फिल्म एज दे वॉज नो स्टार सिस्टम विच केम अप इन द नाइनटीन फोर्टीज and the studio owners they were acting as many times filmmakers they were also the businessmen those who understood uh, the importance of the trade as well and we find that these studio owners they made films and how the people those who were associated with the studios they were being kept on the payroll of the studios and uh, the actors actresses technicians and others all of them uh they became part of that particular studio and how many of these studios in terms of their film production quality uh, they they were renowned in terms of making certain kinds of films we find that some of the studios excelled themselves in making socials others they were making the stunt films some of them they were engaged in making the mythologicals and devotionals and uh, we find that such uh, kind of Uh, making of the films of different genres by these studios they provided a lot of thrust to the film making in india despite uh, that uh, we find that the british they were not ready to provide any kind of a support to the indian film industry and how we find that the efforts of dada sahab phalke etc all of them uh, they were really very helpful in the context of the making of films in india and there were others like savi dada or jf madan etc how they also were instrumental in that sense that savi dada in a way uh, used uh, the kind of camera where he shot some of the films and jf madan was very important in the framework of the establishment of the various theaters in india and we find that not only in bombay which was the nerve center of making of films uh, we find that there were the regional centers kolhapur for example and we find pune and then we find calcutta and all madras all these uh, all these uh, people those who were associated with these kinds of traditions they opened uh, various theaters and uh, when uh, these kinds of films they were being exhibited in india uh, we find that there were many takers people they they relished indian films and on the other hand the british they wanted that their films they should be given preferences uh, which is known as the imperial preferences and which was not liked by the indians and uh, many of them especially some of the leaders they criticized like lalajpat rai for example who criticized the british for providing the imperial preferences to the european films especially the british films and then we find that some of the indian filmmakers and the studio owners like himanshu rai devikarani all of them they played an important role in the development of uh, the film industry and uh, we find that bn sarkar of the new theaters uh, he was also very instrumental in terms of making of so many films which are very meaningful uh, and progressive in nature uh, and in that context uh, udair pathe pathe or hamrahi of uh, bn sarkar's uh, new theaters uh, was definitely an important film and how bimal roy who was working as a cinematographer earlier uh, became quite popular when he directed this first film and we also see that how uh, when the indian films when they were being shown in india for example first talki uh, which was by ardeshi rinani Uh, alamara and the film had 12 songs in it so we find that how song and music they became an integral part of indian cinema and in 1931 we witnessed making of 28 talkies of which there were 23 in hindi four in bengali and one in tamil and the first talkie in uh, tamil called kalidas was directed by h m reddy and it was also made in 1931 and uh, we find that uh, when you talk about the films of 1930s and 40s then they were known for their production companies and bombay talkies prabhat films new theaters and filmistan were some of the famous film companies of those times they were the studio owners and when you talk about south india then avm av mayappan film company in jemini pictures they were also very established kind of studios and uh, Uh, we find that uh, different places they also provided the regional flavor 
uh, to these kinds of films which were being made in these regions and that is how we also see that uh, the development of the regional films during the colonial period and thereafter as well was also linked to the establishment of uh, the various theaters in these regions and the studios as well they definitely played an important role in terms of emergence of the indian cinema and we find that how these studios they were experimenting with the different stories and themes while each developing their own brand of filmmaking as well and the key films of this period show the origins of themes and the subject that have recurred over subsequent decades of filmmaking as well uh, for example new theaters film 1935 classic devdas by actor director pc barua made in both hindi and bengali versions and how it gave indian cinema its most recurrent theme love triangle so this kind of a love triangle could be seen in the later films as well and how devdas which was made in 1935 in bengali as well as hindi both Uh, by P C Barua, in which we find that K L Segal played the role of Devdas in the Hindi version, and P C Barua played the role of Devdas in the Bengali version. And this film was again made in 1955 with Devda uh, with um, Dilip Kumar as Devdas, and we again find that it was again made in 2000 by Sanjay Leela Bansali with Shah Rukh Khan as the main lead, and then again uh, another kind of a version which was Devdi. Uh, with abey deol was also made in the later times so we find that how these kinds of stories they became very relevant in the framework of their times and how they were also being adapted uh, keeping in mind the kind of changes uh, which came in the later times because uh, audience will be able to relate with them for example if you see the original devdas in 35 and even 55 the hero or the protagonist male protagonist goes to calcutta to study but if you see the sharukh khan version in 2000 then he goes to oxford uh, to study so how the films they are also in a way adapted uh, keeping in mind the kind of situation and this film devdas uh, was an adaptation of sharat chand chatterjee's bengali novel of the same name as you can see on the screen and uh, we find that how the enduring male character uh, the tragic tragic romantic hero was shown in this particular film and we find that devdas is a high caste brahmin who cannot marry the love of his life uh, parvati his neighbor's daughter because she is of a lower caste or lower kind of a status uh, which devdas had so he later be friends chandramukhi who is a prostitute and who gives her gives up her profession and turns to his spirituality as well so in a downward spiral of self uh, destruction we find that how devdas uh, becomes an alcoholic and ultimately dies at the gate of parvati's marital home so these kinds of picturizations when such kind of films they were being made at that point of time they became very revolutionary in the sense that how audience liked it and we find that some of the directors like v shantaram who was also the co-founder along with v damle s swatelal and uh, the inbar of prabhat film company which was based in kolhapur and later pune as well and he made many stunt and action films early in the career and uh, favored the socially progressive subjects and dealt with theme considered taboo as well so shantaram's best works they include a period drama about the vengeance of women amar jyoti in 1936 which was the first indian film to be shown at the international film festival in venice and we also see that how shantaram made many other films as well whether duniya na mane in 1937 which was talking about an arranged marriage system and it also in a way was a critique of the mismatched marriages or aadmi for that matter which was talking about the rehabilitation of a prostitute again in 1937 and uh, vishantaram also left prabhat to start his own production company and studio rajkamal kala mandir in bombay and there he continued to make internationally acclaimed films based on social concerns like dr kotnis ki amar kahani and do aankhe bara haath so we find that how these filmmakers they were not only associated with certain studios in the earlier part but in the later part we find that 
they also started their own companies or studios and how uh, these studios definitely played an important role in terms of making films which were based on their own ideas because they did not have to listen to uh, uh, the people those who will fund uh, the films because they were the ones those who were making films with their own kinds of idea we also see uh, that how social films they were also being made by bombay talkies and uh, french austens achut karna in 36 with devakarani and ashok kumar de- with dealing with the issue of untouchability and we find that friends austen and joseph wersching who was the cinematographer of this particular film and uh, joseph wersching was also uh, instrumental in also uh, uh, in a way uh, uh, shooting film called kismat which was made in 1943 so we find that how german filmmakers or uh, germans those who Uh, were there in india they were also associated with the film business in india and we find gyan mukherjee's uh, film kismat uh, which was a product of bombay talkies and uh, this film in a way introduced another favorite theme in hindi cinema which was the idea of lost and found which we find in many of the films of 1970s starring amitabh bachchan and uh, if you see that how this lost and found theme it can also be traced back to mythology in the story of shakuntala so uh, how kismat made this kind of an idea of lost and found theme in popular and later we find so many films they have been made which are dealing with this kind of an idea and uh, we find that initially if uh, we find that films they were silent in nature but they were also devoid of any color as well and we see that even talkies they were continue to be made only in black and white although attempts were made to impart colors to the films so in that sense when we tend to understand the cinema we find that how technology over a period of time progressed and initially when the technology was there for the black and white cinema and later even when technology came for the colored films films in 1930s we find that not many colored films they were being made during that time and colored films uh, became quite popular in the later times so uh, we we have to see the adaptability of the various kinds of uh, techniques or the various uh, kinds of developments which happen in the films over a period of time uh, we find that serendri uh, which was uh, by prabhat films and it was processed in germany and it was the first colored indian film but uh, the craze did not catch up and we find that the first two decades even after 1933 when this film was made in color the films they were continued to be made in black and white only and decades after that witnessed both colored and black and white films as well and uh, we find that in 1970s that the making of black and white films virtually it came to an end as you can see on the screen as well that how during the pre independence period indian cinema did not directly contribute to the struggle for freedom for the fear of being censored and uh, in this context we find that the ideas of freedom they continue to be expressed indirectly through religious and historical cinema as you can see on the screen as well so often such films they had to face the bans and the censorship during this particular period of time and when these kinds of films they were being banned they were in a way rejected by the colonial censors then how the Uh, indians they tried to hoodwink the authorities in terms of uh, making those films and providing them allegorical meanings as well this also uh, we see during this particular period and uh, when you talk about the various kinds of cinemas which were there uh, which were made by the studio owners how they were also talking about the various issues which were very very relevant to the society whether it was talking about the issue of social justice or uh, we find that some of the films uh, like santukaram which was made in marathi in 1936 it became a classic in the history of indian cinema and then there were others like duniya na mane pukar tyag bhumi roti ram shastri dharti ke lal dr kotnis ki amar kahani all of these films of 30s and 40s they they were also talking about certain relevant themes and ideas of that particular period we also see during this period that during the times of the silent cinema uh, cinema halls they were keeping an orchestra in front of the screen and how orchestra would provide viewers an outline of the story and background music along with the film and how they would also entertain 
the viewers with the song as well, music songs and the dances, they have been integral part of the popular theatres. And it was assumed that cinema too would be accompanied by, uh, in a way, music and dance as well. And uh, we find that uh, uh, even in the Parsi theatre, dialogues, they were being communicated in a lyrical manner. And how Indian cinema inherited this tradition. And Alamara, if Alamara the first talk he had 12 songs, then in the Sabha, I had 70 songs in this. And uh, so I was wondering whether there were any dialogues in this film where you have 70 songs. And uh, we find that uh, films, they also uh, uh, maintained these kinds of uh, tradition in other languages as well. And uh, we find that in the initial days when dubbing was not possible, songs had to be recorded along with the shooting and the entire orchestra was to be present at the shooting site. So the actors and the actresses, they were singing themselves and uh, the background singing was not possible in those times. And that is how we see Noor Jahan, Suraya, Surendra, Ashok Kumar, M.S. Subulakshmi, K.L. Sagal, they were all actors, actresses, come singers as well. And when the dubbing came, then a new tradition of playback singers also arrived and the music in the Indian films is generally not conceived as an autonomous entity within itself, but has to be intimately connected to the storyline as well. And when you talk about music, we also talk about dance and how both of them, they have been integral to the films which have been made in India. And uh, when you see uh, these kinds of traditions that how uh, they have such kind of a strong presence in the films and it is rooted in the rich cultural traditions as well, various kinds of dance forms, Bharatanatyam, Kathak, etc. Uh, they are part of this tradition. And the tradition of folk dances is no less rich and diverse. And it is indeed a tourism to say that dance and music form an important part of Indian life. And we have dances and we have songs or music for every occasion in India. And because of uh, uh, this norm, we find that the various cultural forms, including cinema, uh, they also have such kind of interfaces with dance and music. And uh, how they also borrow from the Indian classical traditions, folk traditions and western dance traditions as well. And uh, But the film dance do not use them in their original pure form generally. And dances are used in films in three ways, either a solo performance by heroine or a vamp on the stage or a party. And dance form employed here is often a classical one. Then a chorus at a first festival or some big occasion situations for these dances are somehow woven into the theme of the film and they are often a combination of folk and western dance traditions and thirdly often employed by hero and heroine to express their love for each other. So we see that how the intimate moments between the hero and the heroine are portrayed through songs and music in the film and no specific dance form is restored to by hero or heroine. And uh, how both of them, the songs as well as dance, they are created in accordance with the requirements of the films and are woven into the various situations of the film as well. And we find that in spite of these limitations, melodious music produced by the Indian cinema is an example in itself and a few parallels as well. So film music has derived its mel melodies from three diverse sources, Indian classical music, folk music from different regions and western classical and popular music as well. Thereafter, we find that how studios, those who were playing an important role in the in the filmmaking business in terms of producing big big budgeted large films and how the filmmakers or the studio owners, all of them, uh, they were in a way trying to you know, provide some kind of a thrust to the film industry. But uh, we also see that how during the Second World War, the kind of money which was made by the financiers during the war years and how they, it was an easy way of gaining the quick returns. And this new method of financing movies ultimately brought about an end of the studio system because now the people, those who had become rich during the Second World War, they wanted to invest their money and freelancing was an important concern where they could talk to uh, the film heroes, they could talk to the film directors, they could even talk to the heroines and other technicians and they can in a way hire them on a one-to-one -one project basis. 
So, we find that how the studio owners, they did not have money to pay high fees for their staff and the stars. And so, freelancing made a return, a system whereby all film practitioners were employed on a contractual basis. And the studio system was over by late 1940s and widespread freelancing established by 1950s. It set the pattern for film production thereafter. And we see in the context of the British uh, colonial government that how they wanted to throttle the aspirations of India and in the framework of the national movement or in the framework of any kind of patri patriotic ideas which were shown by them. And in that framework, how 1918 Indian Cinematograph Act was an attempt by the colonial rulers where they established four port cities of Bombay, Calcutta, Madras and Rangoon. The film censors, they were being established in all these four places. And, uh, and this system, uh, the new Cinematograph Act of 1918, uh, the old system of police commissioner acting as the sole censor was scrapped. But even after the new legislation, we find that the commissioner acted as an ex officio president of the board of center, uh, board of censor at each place. And uh, we find that some of the filmmakers like Krishna Rao Mistri, Elias Babur Rao Painter, he brought a new artistic and scenic charm through his painstaking cinematography, control over lighting, impressive sets and picturization of crowd scenes in his film. So various kinds of genres of the films in which uh, were made by Babu Rao Painter, in which we find that how V. Shantaram also played the role in Savkari Pash and it was considered as the first realist film of India. And it was dealing with the day-to-day -day common theme of the blood-sucking money lenders who exploited the impoverished villagers and how the innocent pageants in the cruel city dwellers, they have this kind of a contrast was shown in this film. And uh, this film was devoid of theatrical elements and we find that uh, which were evident in works which preceded it and how from the beginning we find that the realism coexisted with idealism in Indian filmmaking. Often idealism itself was a critique of reality with reference to a higher morality. So uh, the critics they have tried to see from this kind of a perspective that how realism was existing with idealism in their Indian filmmaking. And uh, so this was an important concern and we also find that some of the films of this particular period whether uh, Bhakta Vidur which was made and how this film was not liked by the colonial censors because it was trying to communicate the contemporary reality to the audience where we find that uh, the main character of the film was shown in some kind of a Gandhian garb and it was being criticized as a thinly veiled resume of political events in India. And uh, we find that uh, the, the filmmakers, those who were associated in terms of making films during this period, we talked about Vishantaram and how Vishantaram made a number of meaningful and purposeful films uh, during this particular period of time. We also see that not only the Western India or Southern India, uh, Eastern India, all, all these regions, they were trying to contribute something to the film industry in their own way. And uh, many times we find that how Tamil Nadu played an important role in the promotion of Hindi films. And AV, AVM, Jamini Films, Vijaya Pictures and Prasad Productions from Madras, they made films in Hindi, uh, which provided bridge between the North and South. And how a number of famous, famous heroines to Hindi cinema, Vahida Rahman, Vijanti Mala, Him Malini, Jaya Prada, Sri Devi and Rekha dominated the silver screen for a long time and all of them they came from south of India. And many of the filmmakers, those who were making films in Hindi, uh, they were not, uh, their mother tongue was not Hindi, whether you see V. Shantaram or Nitin Bose, Bimal Roy, Rishikesh Mukherjee, Sham Banigal, Ketan Mehta, all of them, they came from the non-Hindi areas and how their films, which were in Hindi, they became very popular as well. And when you talk about others in the recent times, Mani Ratnam, for example, or A.R. Rahman's music, or S.P. Bala Subramanyam's voice and Shri Devi's acting, how all of them, they have brought together millions uh, from across regions. So in that sense, uh, we find that cinema definitely has contributed in that way where Hindi uh, became some kind of a pan-Indian scenario and uh, it is not only in the context that India is one of the countries which is making the maximum number of films 
but we also find that how many of the filmmakers and technicians of the indian cinema they have been recognized at different international levels whether the lata mangeshkar singing 25000 songs in 15 languages or malayalam actor prem nazir for playing the leading role in 600 film or hindi film actor jagdish raj for the maximum roles as a police officer all of them they figured in the guinness book of world records so we find that uh, such kind of achievements by the indian film make indian filmmakers technicians or the people those who are associated with the film industry have definitely played an important role in terms of uh, indian cinema and the rise of the studio system in the initial part uh, when the indian film making began uh, it definitely provided an impetus to the indian film industry so with this i'd like to end the discussion thank you very much